Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. We're going to work a simple problem here on the board, but I'm excited to teach you this problem because although it's simple to calculate, it really encompasses everything we've been talking about. And also, I can, when we get to the end of the problem, I can draw some pretty powerful conclusions I think that will give you even more understanding. So what we have here is some kind of an I-beam. You can think of this black thing being some kind of steel I-beam or a wooden I-beam. And you can see that we have a force, one single force, and it's kind of off this knob here that we've got connected to it. And the force is 1,000 newtons, and it's angled at some angle up. Now, we're not actually given the angle in the problem, which is common in mechanics. Sometimes you're given the angle, sometimes you're not. Here, we're given a little triangle representation here, three, four, five. This indirectly gives you the angle there because you know with any triangle, you can figure out the angle that this is pointing by doing inverse cosines or inverse sines. So we're given the direction and the magnitude of this force. And we're also given all of the directional information that we have. Notice that there's like an XY coordinate system centered on point O here, which we're calling the origin. And the problem says that we want to find the moment of this force about the point O. All right, so obviously this is a two-dimensional problem. So we could do it in a scalar way. And you know, I'll kind of outline that in just a second for you. But what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to use vectors to do it rather than the scalar calculations. And that way you can kind of get a feel for what the vector calculation is doing. But before we do the vector calculation, how would you attack this if this were a scalar problem? Well, you would know that this force here is at some angle. And so it can be represented as a a vertical force and a horizontal force. And you can calculate what those components are because you know the magnitude and you know indirectly the direction. If, if I asked you to figure out the angle of this to the horizontal, you could figure it out because you would know you could do the inverse cosine of four over five adjacent over hypotenuse, or you could do an inverse sine of three over five because that's the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. That's just from trigonometry. You could figure out this angle. And knowing that, then by doing cosines and sines and knowing the hypotenuse, you could figure out how much force is horizontal and how much force is vertical. We've done that in lots of problems before. Now, think, think with me here. For the vertical component of the force, whatever it is, okay, what would be the moment on this point due to the vertical component of the force? It would be this force times the perpendicular distance to the axis here, right? Because remember, it's Every, because it's a cross product and because of the way we define the moment, it's really just the perpendicular component of the force to, uh, to the, uh, the axis of basically the axis of rotation or a line passing through the axis of rotation. So here we have our, our point of rotation. We have a line coming up through to it. So this is the perpendicular distance to a vertical force here. Now also, if we put a nail in here and just let this vertical force act, it would tend to spin it around like this. So we would take this force times 100, and that would be the moment that would be trying to spin it in this direction, okay? Now separately, if we took the horizontal force, right, which we can calculate, we would take this times this distance here because what we've got here is we've got an axis, a point of rotation. Here is a line passing through that. This would be the force that would be acting perpendicular coming down to a line that passes through my, uh, point of rotation. So make sure you got that wrapped around your head first of all. The vertical force times the 100, the, which would be spinning it this way, which would be a positive uh, a moment. And then the horizontal force would be trying to spin it in the opposite direction, and it would be this times this distance here, which is 200 millimeters or 0.2 meters. And that would be the moment trying to spin it in the opposite direction. And since it's going the other way, that would be a negative moment. 